Today we are looking at the cheapest but most useful camera accessory I have purchased. Hi everybody, my name's Tom Fricker. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's time for a history lesson. Camera technology dates as far back as the 1700s, when stencils are used with sunlight in order to make a mixture of chalk, nitric acid and silver nitrate darken the printed word onto paper. Whilst professional photography started in the 1800s, it's only around 50 years later in the year 1900 that mass-produced cameras come around when Kodak released their very popular brownie camera. Whilst it's fair to say that camera technology has come on leaps and bounds over the years and forever seems to be accelerating, especially these days with the invention of mirrorless cameras, there's one thing that hasn't really changed in all of that time, and that is the camera shoe. These days known as a hot shoe, accessory attachment points really started appearing on both professional and consumer cameras in around 1913. Prior to that, as I'm sure you'll have seen in old footage and pictures, photographers were left holding a dangerous magnesium flash which would explode with a blinding light and usually leave behind a relatively singed photographer. The accessory shoe was created to free up the photographer's hands and potentially save a few eyebrows. Whilst cameras and flash technology have moved on massively in the last 100 years, it's true to say that the technology surrounding the shoe has not really progressed at all. In the 1970s, the hot shoe was introduced that put in place connectors which enabled data and power to be passed between the camera and the accessory. Beyond that though, not a huge amount. And you're probably asking, Tom, why the history lesson? Well, the point is that one thing has been very consistent with regards to the camera shoe, and that is that there is only one. The camera accessory population has exploded over the past couple of decades. Whilst originally camera flashes were really the main accessory that a photographer may look to attach to their camera, these days, and especially with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras really replacing the dedicated video camera, there are a huge amount of accessories to choose from, and many of them are all vying for the same piece of prime real estate. You get flashes, microphones, external recorders, LED panel lights, camera assistants, wireless microphone receivers, wireless transmitters, external EVFs. You can even mount your action camera or GoPro to your camera. And you may be wondering, so what? Well, consider what happens if you want to mount more than one accessory to your camera at a time. That clearly is not going to be a good idea. However, there are some good solutions that can help you out. One option is a cage system. These are essentially a bracketing system that surrounds your camera and are covered with accessory points so that things can be attached to it. However, these cage systems are actually quite expensive. For my camera, for instance, the Sony a7 III, they start at around £80 but stretch up into the hundreds. And the other thing you need to consider is you may actually need to purchase accessories for the cage system itself. You can buy handles so you can hold it steadily. You can also buy additional anchor points so you can attach even more accessories. The cost of a cage system can really stack up. And the other thing to consider is that they are not universal. They are purposely designed to fit a specific camera. So if you have numerous cameras of different brands, you can't necessarily move them from one camera to the other. A cheaper and effective option is a cold shoe extension bar, and they are what we are talking about today. These are just a simple bar that can be mounted into the shoe of your camera using a double-sided bracket. The bar itself has two channels, one at the top and one at the bottom. They are the same shape as the shoe on your camera, meaning that you can slide accessories onto them using the same connector you would usually use to connect them to the camera itself. However here, because of the length of the bar, you can connect multiple accessories. The only thing limiting the configuration of accessories that you can put onto the bar are the length of the bar itself and the access to the camera that those accessories may actually require. You need to think about which ports your accessories may need to be plugged into on your camera. So for instance, the microphone inputs or the HDMI inputs in order to figure out which configuration will work best on the bar. You need to make sure that the wire from that accessory can stretch and be plugged into the correct port. When it comes to bar length, there's a lot of optionality. They usually start at around four inches, but stretch up to around 20, meaning that you can purchase one which really has the real estate you require to plug everything in you need. The bar I have is eight inches long and it's perfect for me. I can fit on all of the accessories I need to be able to record these videos. And the thing not to forget about them is they're double-sided. So not only can you use the top, but you can also slide accessories underneath them. And the great thing about them is they are universal and very inexpensive.
Price wise, I paid about 20 pounds or 25 US dollars for my extension bar, the Movo DSE8. You can get a shorter version at six inches and they go up to around 20. And the longer they get, the more expensive they get, topping out at around 30 pounds or 35 US dollars. Cheaper options are available. However, some of them are far less flexible. So for instance, they may have fixed mounting points, really limiting the number of accessories you may be able to attach to them. When you consider that I only ever need one of these because I can place it in any camera I like and I can attach any accessories I want, you can really see how they become far cheaper than a cage system. You can also mount the bar forwards as opposed to sideways, moving something like a microphone far closer to its subject, potentially very useful for vlogging. The only thing you need to be careful about is to make sure the microphone doesn't appear in the camera's view. The only drawback I have found on an extension bar over a cage system is really carryability. They are not as sturdy as a cage system. Therefore, if you need to carry your camera around with the accessories attached, maybe a cage system would be better for you. These certainly do wobble about a bit when you are carrying around and moving. However, in my case, my camera is usually mounted to a tripod for recording these videos, and therefore it's never really been a problem for me. One other consideration is whether or not you actually have any accessories that rely on the hot shoe to actually deliver power and data to and from your camera and your accessory. With the extension bar in the camera, the shoe's connectors are covered and so cannot be used. You cannot pass data or power through to an accessory via them. So if that is a consideration for you, you may find that a cage system is better suited. In my view, this is a must have accessory for any photographer or videographer who has a penchant for accessories, especially those that need to be mounted to the camera itself. Previous exceptions with regards to stability and the use of the hot shoes connectors granted. So that's it for today's videos, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments section below. And until next time, have a great day.